Hey, yo, what up? It's Billy Quick back with another Altered TCG video. I'm excited to announce I've been invited to the Marketplace and Print on Demand Phase 2 Closed Beta. So as you can imagine, the NDA has been lifted so I can share these videos and pictures. I was just invited this morning, frankly, just 30 minutes after the beta started. So I am coming in late, but this is going to be my first look and I'm excited to show you. So let's get into it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we're going to be going over the initial setup, what that looks like, two-factor authentication, setting up your wallet. We're going to do some marketplace buying and selling. We're going to do print on demand. We're going to talk about the feedback tool that's available on the website and then some closing thoughts. Okay, so now let's actually get into it. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, so the first thing you may notice is that I have this new icon on the bottom left. This is not something that I've seen before. It showed up on mobile for me as well, but this is the Brassbug Bot Beta Testing Help Center. So you can do it like an automated system. I don't know if you've ever used like online DMV or something. This is very reminiscent of what you experience there. Um, I haven't actually dived into it yet, but that's something that I do plan to cover later on in the video. So we'll come back to that. So the first thing that I know I need to do is go set up my wallet. So I have a button here in my menu that says unlock your wallet. To access premium services such as Marketplace Print On Demand, you must unlock your wallet by providing eligible billing and shipping addresses and enabling 2FA on your account. Um, I did already read these just to make sure I'm not going to be breaking any rules. So if you do want to read these, um, I might be able to share a link. I don't know, maybe in the description. Otherwise, let's just uh, unlock the wallet. To access Marketplace, you must unlock your wallet by enabling 2FA and providing your addresses. Okay, this looks pretty straightforward. Nice and simple. Let's see if this works as expected. So 2FA, strengthen your account security, any change in settings, log you out, log you back in. Okay. Oh, you get to pick email or authenticator. Let's go with authenticator. Generally a pretty big fan of that. Oh, um, wh where's the authenticator? Didn't ask me to set it up. Okay, maybe that'll come later. Maybe I'll get an email. It did say to log out and log back in, so let's give that a try. Okay, so yes, logging out and logging back in. This does allow me to set it up. So let's open up the Google Authenticator app. Let's see how simple this is. Usually pretty straightforward. Yep, Altered Connect is what it's called. So that seemed to work pretty flawlessly. Let's enter our code. All right, let's continue unlocking our wallet. The 2FA is done. Let's set up our shipping address. Add a new address. Okay, it looks like we are all good to go. Looks like that will be it for the wallet. Okay, your wallet is activated. It gives you access to the print on demand service and allows you to buy or sell cards using euros or dollars. You can refill your wallet with altered refills or transfer your earnings from marketplace sales directly to a bank account. That's exciting. They're non-refundable. Okay, so once you put money into this wallet, you cannot take it out. Interesting. Or I guess you can transfer it, but you can't refund it. Anti-fraud limit. You can only earn a maximum of $2,000 right now selling cards. Okay, interesting. All right, let's uh, add some money to our wallet and see if we can do some buying. Okay, so I had to add a second card here to get it to work the first time it aired out. I'm assuming it's because I'm sending money to a French company and I don't normally do that, given I'm based in the USA. So second time worked, we've got some money in our account. Let's go try and buy some stuff. Okay, so I've looked in here just a little bit before I started recording and I did notice there are a lot of cards that have a buy thing next to them that don't actually have any listings. I don't know if I'll be able to find one here for this video, but one thing I've also noticed is that there's only 28 pages. So there's a maximum of 28 pages. So let's say if I filter by uniques here, I'm only going to see 28 pages of uniques. Oh, it looks like that issue that I was seeing before has worked itself out. I guess it was because I had nothing in my wallet. Before I was seeing uniques here listed for starting from zero dollars and I didn't even have the option to buy. Um, but it looks like that has worked itself out. So we may just only have things that we can buy available to us now. 
So one thing I definitely wanted to do was go through and look at the rares that I have less than a playset of and see if I could just fill those out and see how simple this process is of just buying multiple copies of rares that I need. So in this case, there's only one available. One available at 11 cents, one available at 17 cents. So if I click buy here, confirm purchase. Oh, I've now purchased the card. Okay. It did update right away. I believe I only had one. Yep. Now there's one at 17 cents. Let's buy that one as well. Yep, and now it says I have three. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I'm expecting to go through and just buy everything that's cheap, you know, pennies, nickels, dimes, whatever, until I have a place set up them. But as not to bore you to death by going through and buying rares in this video, let's uh, look at some of the uniques that are available and look at some of the prices that we can find them for. So the deck I've been playing most regularly, as you've probably seen if you watched any of my previous videos, is Lindaway. So let's see if we can find any, any cards for Lindaway that fit into our list. Um, and now I did notice there's a prices subcategory here. So let's try and set a maximum price of maybe $20 and see what we can find. Nice. Okay. So it looks like that is working. Before when I was testing this with no money in my wallet, uh, the, the filter for adding the price did not actually work. And it looks like there are only 700. So that means we're probably going to get to see all of them. Yeah. Only 22 pages. So we did not overflow here. Let's sort by price ascending. See what the cheapest unique here is. So we've got a $3.41 Dorothy Gale. Four mana from hand, two mana from reserve, two, two, four. You may pay one. If you do, you may send target character to reserve with hand cost three or less. So this is kind of just worse than regular Dorothy Gale. Up to one target character gains fleeting. I guess it's flexible, right? The stats aren't great. I understand why this card's listed for three bucks. Or maybe we can find a unique that fits into Lindaway that maybe has a sacrifice effect or something useful. Generally, I'd like to find cards that I'm not playing in Lindaway so that I can uh, play the three of or a play set of that card and then have a different card. So these alchemists are not something I'm really looking for because I usually am playing three. I think I could make an exception if the card was good. So let's see what this says. The stats are pretty solid for what you're getting here. So two from hand, one from reserve, one, two, two. The effect is from hand, you may put a card from your hand in reserve. It's a, if it's a spell, target character gains a boost. This card is okay. This seems playable in a Faunus, but certainly not for Lindaway. So let's move on. This is an interesting Belasinka I've stumbled on. Uh, this I think this is just better than the rare Belasinka, but it, I can't remember exactly what the rare does. In any case, it's not bad for, you know, how cheap this unique is. 569. Okay, so we looked at what buying cards looks like. Let's see if we can figure out how to sell cards and what that flow looks like. So I went to market. I'm in my collection. Let's set a filter to rares. And I'm going to see any rares that I have more than three of, like this machine in the ice, for example. I'm going to see if I can sell one pretty easily. So sell one. Unit price. Okay, so I do have to come up with a price. And I'm guessing this is what the current marketplace value of these rares are and what people are selling them for. I think that would make sense. So yeah, let's just try and sell one of these machine in the ice. So it looks like they're only going for 10 cents. So I'll receive 7 cents after I sell it. There is a 5% fee on sellers when you sell a card, which I think is fair, seems reasonable. I mean, it's certainly no game development fee. For example, Steam takes 30% when you sell a game on their uh, service, but 5% seems reasonable, seven cents for the trouble. I'm not really sure what to do with the physical version of the card after I sell it in this digital marketplace. Does it make sense to just put it in a cube? Do I throw it away? Because yeah, I'm not really sure. So let me know what you guys are going to do if you use this service and still have the physical cards around. Nice. So it looks like it's been updated. It shows I have 
one copy up for sale. That's relatively straightforward. And let's see, can I filter or sort by price? Yeah, price descending. So what is the most expensive rare that I have? Oh, Ocklet. Okay, it looks like people are selling this card for four bucks. That's a little bit surprising. I didn't, I didn't think this card would be worth $4 or the most expensive card in my collection by any means. Do I have any that I have more than three copies of that I can sell for a reasonable amount of money? No, they quickly fall off. $1, they go from almost $4 to $1 within 10 cards. So yeah, it looks like it's pretty straightforward to sell a card. I'm not really sure if I'll get to see what selling a card looks like on my end. So once I actually complete the sale, if I'll be able to see who it's going to or if any of that information will actually be available. All right, let's check out print on demand. I know that with this phase two of the closed beta, you are now allowed to print on demand the alternate art cards. I think that is not something you were able to do in the first phase. So I kind of want to give a shot to printing the alternate art brass bugs because I have one of those and I'd like to have more of them because they're more interesting looking and harder to get, right? So if I can print many of those brass bug tokens, that would be cool. So let's go over the onboarding here. So how to place an order. Orders are made in packs of 20 cards. Okay, so it looks like you have to order 20 cards at a time. You can add a card as many times as you want as long as you own the ownership of at least one copy. Okay. The localization here is not the best, but this is kind of what I was hoping for, for the tokens especially. You can order as many as you'd like. These packs can be foil or normal. I'd be interested to see if I can do a mix of foil or normal, so I guess we'll find out in just a moment. You can combine 15 packs, so 15 times 20, that's what, 300? So you can order 300 cards at a time. For the time being, you cannot print exclusive cards with printing rights of once every year, promo cards or alt arts. This is conflicting information. In the phase two invite that I got, they said that you can do this, so I guess I'll give it a test. First, you need to unlock a card's right, a foil from his detail page for it to be displayed in the list of cards you can add to a foil pack. Oh yes, I've seen this before. Um, I will probably order some foils, so let's give this a try. All right, let's give this a try. Okay, so for pricing, so a $20 pack, a dollar a card. So as expected, the more packs you order, the cheaper the cards are. And this makes sense. 5,000 packs can be printed each Tuesday. Any additional orders will be printed the following Tuesday. Okay, I'm assuming that's not for us because who would be ordering 5,000 packs? It just means as a total order. So let's click new order. New order name, let's go with, uh, let's go with tokens, I guess. We can try and do 10 of the brass bugs and 10 of the uh, orders recruits. Okay, create order. Ah, okay, so our question was answered pretty quickly if we can split them up. So it looks like you have to do normal or, or foil. Now, I am curious if you can order any of these tokens as foil, and if you can, which foilers do they use? I'll have to go into my into my collection and figure that out. So a normal pack, let's create it. Okay, so pack one, we need to add cards here. And let's find Brass Bug. So here's my alternate art Brass Bug card. Exclusive cards can only be print on demand once per year. An exclusive card which has been print on de demand cannot be sold over the marketplace till the next reset. Okay, let's order 10 of these, right? So let's add. Okay, so another thing I wanted to do was my friend went to Spain recently and he bought me a few altered packs in Spanish. So one thing I wanted to try with the print on demand was just printing those same cards that he bought me from Spain, the rares that I open, the unique that I open that are in Spanish, and just printing them so that I can have the, the playset in English and have these fun little Spanish versions of the cards. Okay, so I took those cards and I added them to this list. One thing while I was adding them that I noticed is that I can take the actual spelling of the card in another language. For example, the Bravos Trailblazer. I don't know if... No, you won't be able to tell. The, for example, the Bravos Trailblazer is 
not at all spelled that way in Spanish. So I can just type in the lettering of this card uh, and it came up in English, which was making it very easy to find the cards that I needed. I could just match the art and the faction without having to know the language. So that was pretty useful. Okay, so we've now sold on the marketplace. We've bought on the marketplace. We have gone through the print on demand and added things to packs to then purchase for later, both uh, rares that we have and alternate art tokens. Now, I guess let's try and go through the feedback tool. And that's gonna be this little chat function here. And let's see what we can report. Did we find any bugs today? One thing I noticed when I was buying cards is that if I want a rare that I don't have a playset of, if I buy a copy of that rare, I wish it would tell me that I haven't printed or ordered a print on demand with new copies of that card so that I don't own them actually physically yet. I think that could be useful, especially depending on how long the cards take to get to you, because if I order something print on demand, it takes three weeks to get here. I still don't know if I've gotten it physically. Maybe I forgot. So I think that's some of the feedback I'm going to give here. I'm using the computer. It asked me if I'm using a mobile phone. This, uh, the marketplace and print on demand are not actually available on mobile phones. And that's something that was in the email that they sent to me that I wouldn't actually be able to make these purchases or buy things from the marketplace, do print on demand from mobile, which is a bit of a bummer because I would expect my intuition tells me that that's where most people are going to be using these features. So not having it available in the beta is kind of lame. It gives me this impression that they're not going to actually ship it on mobile to begin with, which I mean, getting the feature is better than not having the feature, but having it on mobile is kind of where, like I said, I expect most people to use it. So I'm a little bit bummed in that regard. Okay. And so they're just talking about my suggestion has been recorded and it, I'm assuming it's just filing a bug or adding it to a spreadsheet or something somewhere. Um, and now I'm assuming they want me email for feedback. They can email me for more information, etc. That was pretty straightforward to use. It is cool that you can have multiple conversations going for different topics. This is a reasonably well put together feedback tool and it's built with Zendesk, which I believe uses AI to do a lot of this. So this is kind of what I'd expect. Nothing, you know, to write home about or nothing exceptional and, and nothing terrible. So just kind of a fine service to use. All right. Thanks guys for joining me on this marketplace and print on demand first look. I'm very excited. This is the next step to making the game more accessible. Having access to the marketplace is going to allow diehard TCG players to actually buy the singles that they want, build the decks that they want to play. Because right now the best way to acquire cards is just purchasing sealed product, opening packs, and just trading or buying cards from people that you trust in person. There are other avenues, but I wouldn't recommend them. There's a marketplace where people list cards for absurd prices. And then you have no way to acquire the cards physically until there's print on demand. So there's a lot of gray area there. It's not run by Equinox officially. So I'm really, really looking forward to print on demand and marketplace. And let me know what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one.